join me on Mirchi Presents. Curl on dream homes with me, Gauri Khan, powered by Bonito Designs and Ace Group, the show where I design spaces for India's top creative minds. And you come along on this beautiful journey. So I love the way this space has been handled. I was only 21 when I moved to Mumbai with my husband. The future was scary, exciting, beautiful, all at the same time. I didn't know what to expect out of the city, and more so the film industry. But the one thing that kept me going was having the right people by my side. Today's guest is one such friend whom I've known since Delhi. His films are powerful and evocative. His stories are about resilience and triumph of the human spirit. He draws his inspiration from life to create films that are loved by audiences everywhere. An amazing filmmaker whose journey spans from documentaries to Bollywood blockbusters. I present to you Kabir Khan. Thank you. Hello, Kabir. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> How are you? Ages. Too it's many years. Like I've what? not seen you like. Close to ten. Yeah, I have no clue. I have no. Clue. I'm not counting the last <laughs> two years, so maybe close to yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah. It's just been so a blank. I, but I invited you here before. I think you were busy. I have come here once. You were not here. Really? I, re I remember that. I came here briefly. Really? This is, I think, when you had inaugurated this, but okay. you were not here. Uh, ah, okay, okay. Day. I was not aware. Yeah. See, we have no clue what's yeah. happening. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. I know. It's been like Welcome. ages. So, Gauri and I go back a long, long way, all the way back to Delhi. Uh, and we were also from the same school, modern school, and therefore we were doing a musical called West Side Story, which in incidentally was also the first production of Ashley Lobo, the choreographer that we all know has done many songs in, in Bollywood too. Gauri and I were in, in the Puerto Rican gang called The Sharks, and we used to dance together. And uh, that's how I also met uh, Shah Rukh, who uh, was then also my senior in film school. And in fact, it's through that acquaintance that I got to know Shah Rukh better. And Shah Rukh actually gave me his notes to study from. They were really extensive, well-made notes. And I must say that I think I did well in uh, film school because of those notes. So uh, it's a little late in the day, but thank you so much for those, uh, Shah Rukh. So Kabir, now that I'm designing this space of yours, where I believe you've been writing all your great works, all the films you've written are through this beautiful space, which you love and you don't want to let go of, um, which I understand. But what is your process? Like, you're in your space and where is your inspiration coming from? If you can just tell us a little bit about so, it. So, you know, Gauri, the inspiration can be just about anything. And I've realized that a lot of the inspiration act for my initial films came from my uh, experiences as a documentary filmmaker. You know, like yeah. my first film, Kabul Express, was in a way so, almost entirely based on what happened with me in Afghanistan. Like crazy experiences oh in God, Afghanistan yes. where we nearly got ourselves killed and we nearly got kidnapped oh by the Taliban. God. So all that became my first film. So I draw a lot upon those yeah, experiences yeah. of mine. All my travels, Through because travel, in my yeah. in my documentary days, I got this really great privilege of you know having traveled to some 70, 80 countries uh, over a wow. period of about five, six years. So I draw a lot from that. Therefore, yeah. a lot of my initial yeah. films are set internationally. Yeah, because your films are very versatile. They so are, I draw yeah. from that. And then I realize that it could also be a newspaper headline. It could be just one line story that somebody tells me. Oh, that's great. Yeah. See, that's I love spaces. It has a lot of light. And your, that, that way, when you sit in that space of yours, your desk, yes. and you look right, and the yeah. beautiful view that you yeah. have, yeah. I think that's what is very inspirational to you. And obviously, we are not going to yeah. block that. Okay, Gauri, I'm going to show you the space. Small space. Already? Which is my little sort of adda that I call it. And as you can see, wow. the, the problem is that mm. it's got Three walls of glass. Oh no! So, you can, so, wow. you, so we you can't can, do you have anything. One wall. <laughs> what do you do on glass? Yeah, that's the problem. Three sides glass. And it's, yeah. it's got a desk which is in a certain we sense. We can give you some new blinds. 
can you do can, that. You can give, yeah, That's because it's full idea. glass, so you can <laughs> give me new blinds. Yeah. I'm on the uh, uh, 17th floor, which actually is plus another three parking floors. I'm on the 20th floor. I have this uh, bunch of eagles who are always circling around that building. And I love watching, you know, sometimes when I'm just thinking, yeah. I'm just looking out of that window and I keep just looking at these eagles nature, yeah, who are still yeah. circling yeah. around. Uh, but yeah, so that's a space that I meet a lot of people to discuss ideas. I think you know, you're emotionally connected to that place. Absolutely. So we are going to respect that yeah. and try to do as much as we can. You know, I've been here for eight years and I just, I didn't leave because I love really airy and, and places mm. that have a lot of light. So, you know, having Natural this right light, corner yeah. with yeah. these uh, yeah. uh, floor to ceiling windows. And I think you're windows. just used to, are you a creature of habit? That you just want I to think I am, pretty just much. Just stick there yeah. and... If I like something, then I'm saying I'm fine. I don't want to, you know, move. So, uh, yeah, I think I am a creature of habit when it comes to having, you know, finding a little space that allows me to um, think about my stories, write. Uh, it's just something I've Basically, preserve used to. Yeah. everything, preserve and the I've whole vibe, the essence of the space shouldn't go. And True. I've understood. I'm understanding where you're coming from. But there's, there's so, a, it's going to be a, a challenge for sure. The, because the, the bigger challenge is going to be something else, Gauri. Uh, is that you'll have like a few hours, maybe, okay, one day. To, to oh. do this because we're bang in the middle of production and there are like oh hundreds God. of meetings going on. So when okay, I've never came, done this before. No? Never. See, that's but a big challenge. But there are three glass walls, so yes. we don't have too much work. Yes. Wow, my team has to like really get to get their act together and just spruce it up is the right word. Looking Read forward to that one. Kabi's office is clearly very precious to him and it should be. It's where he made some fabulous work from. I think it needs a little restructuring. But here's the thing, the ever oh so busy Kabir has given me just one day to do this. One day. You know, I've been in this office space for the last eight years and uh, I never wanted to shift out because I always feel that a, that a place has a vibe, uh, whether it's a home or whether it's an office. And if you connect with that vibe, uh, there's no need really to, to shift out. It's been very rewarding for me, this, this office. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of light, it's airy, which is what I love as a person that reflects in my home and in my office. That's why I think I've grown roots here and, and sort of I'm very possessive about all the little elements that I have in my office. I have. But I really admire Gauri and her sense of aesthetics and designing. So if she feels that I do need a makeover, maybe I'm not being able to see it because I'm so close to this place. But since I really admire her aesthetics, I'm looking forward to what she does. So, here's handing over the office to you, Gauri. Kabir was a different person back in college. I mean, we all were, right? Over the years, Kabir's passion and love for his work has only grown stronger. My major concern now is that I just have a day to put his office space together. I have never worked on a project with such a tight timeline before. I really can't revamp or redesign this space in such a short time. So my only option here is to spruce it up, I guess. I really have to think around the existing design. But you know what? I'm always up for a challenge. Kabir, I'm glad you're here today and I've just got the feedback from my crew and from my team and they've told me a few things that you don't want a certain things done, what do's and don'ts. <laughs> and they're very, very clear that this is what you want and this is what you don't want. And of course, we are having issues, you know, following what your design brief is. We'll have to try and do it in just how many hours? One day? What is it? This. One day, one one calendar day. You can utilize 24 hours or you can utilize 12 if the crew wants to sleep. I'm okay, really sorry about gonna, that. Okay, <laughs> we're going to try. Okay, so let me tell you a bit about my office. 
My office is a space where I retreat to when I need to just think and come up with some new designs. It's my safe haven away from all distractions and noise. As a creative professional, I feel it's essential to have such a space where you can think and just be yourself. And incidentally, this is also my inspiration for the office space I want to create for Kabir. Before we go ahead, because you know, you made all these requests uh, for the changes and you uh, briefed my team. So I thought, you know, to make things lighter and uh, understand your vision of design, where you're coming from, your thoughts. And since you're such an amazing director, I thought I'd play this game with you. So to oh. understand and maybe learn or understand how your headspace works and what happens. As a director, Kabir takes design decisions every day, whether it is the look of his film, approving costumes, choosing color palettes with the cinematographer. And yet, when it comes to his office, Kabir seems a bit reluctant to change much. So to help Kabir experiment, I have prepared some questions for him. So I am going to give you three characters uh -huh. and you have to describe it in your words. What kind of home will these people stay? Like visually, if, if they are in your film, suppose. Okay. Supposing I say the character is about 30 years old, lives in New York, maybe he's a photojournalist, travels, always has a camera, he's an undercover, maybe spy, maybe. Oh my God, that's so a many things. That's a complicated so, character. So how, where will this person stay? Okay, so. Like a home, maybe. Yeah, from yeah. the. Top of my head, I would say photographer travels. I would give her a nice big studio apartment in New York, um, a little lofty because I'm saying, seeing this person as a little artistic, a little yeah, boho. Yeah. Lots of camera equipment lying around, which I love. I love my rooms also with a lot of camera equipment. So that's something yeah, I identify yeah. with. Oh this yeah, character. yeah, we can We have to retain that. Yes. I, I, yeah. And uh, the undercover part will remain undercover. So hopefully, we should not see any elements <laughs> yeah. of that uh, in yeah. her apartment. Agreed. But yeah, so a nice. Big, airy and lots of lovely light because yeah. a photographer needs nice light. Uh, sort of a studio apartment stroke loft in New York is where I see. So the second character is from your film Bajrangi Bhaijan. Hmm. I think it was Karina's character uh -huh. and she played Rasika. So yeah. I've written all the points so don't yeah. forget. What kind of home do you think in she would want to live in? If, that if, character. If she was to come here to Bombay or like I would describe yeah, what Bombay, I gave her. Yeah, Bombay, yeah, 100%. Yeah, because Bombay. in Delhi she lives in this old Haveli, right? The kind you so get in So we change in, in it to Bombay, so everything is so, about yeah, Bombay. So I'm, I'm wondering which part would correspond, but I would, no, I would probably take her away from the kind of space that she's grown in, but because she's grown up in a Haveli, I would still give her a place which is, has a little bit of uh, an open space because I think she would get absolutely suffocated <laughs> in the sort of boxy houses that otherwise, you know, all of us have in Bombay. So yeah. I would look for maybe a, a small apartment, but like with a step out terrace where she oh, can lovely. have a little uh, plants and she can, you I know. think you're getting everything, all the boxes, I'm going to just tick mark because you're just getting everything <laughs> right and you just have this beautiful vision of so all I would see spaces. Rasika in a space like that. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So great. And the last question is, what kind of a home would you like to live in oh. in Bombay? So, in a, in a certain sense, it would be a combination of what I gave the photographer and Rasika. Our home in, in Bombay, actually, the reason why Mini and I have never shifted out of that for the last two decades is because it's got this like terrace, uh, three jut out terraces around which all living spaces are wrapped around. Oh, so nice. I thought it gave us a sense of sort of Delhi for us because both Mimi yeah. and I are from Delhi. Nostalgic. So, yeah, Very so nostalgic. all our rooms open out onto these terraces. Yeah. With That's the best you can do in Bombay. Absolutely. That's and so what we've done is yeah. we created a forest there, not just a terrace garden, we've created a jungle oh, there. Wow, uh, I'd love to see that actually. Yeah, so that is something that, uh, that's the kind of space I love, to be able to just sit out with a cup of tea. The greens uh, and yeah, the indoor, outdoor We have a, a little like, divans outside on the terrace, surrounded oh, nice. by trees. Yeah. And because of the trees, the birds come. Oh, so beautiful. you can't see anything but the trees, yeah. <laughs> okay, lovely. That gives me quite an idea of what is your design sensibility. So that's nice. And there's nothing much we can do because we have to play with all the design tips you've given my team. <laughs> and we are going to take that cue and move forward. And we are going to do it in less than 24 hours. Wow. And that's the plan. I'm looking forward to that. I know Kabir is emotionally invested in his office. So with the little time given to me, I'm going to do my best to give him an office that is new and a little familiar. 
So the idea was to design the quintessential working space as Kabir will spend a lot of time here planning, writing his films. So the decor is kept minimal. I chose the upholstery and rugs from D-Decor's beautiful collection. I went ahead with D-Decor for three simple reasons. Availability, efficiency and high quality material. There is usually a time constraint when renovating office spaces. But with D-Decor, I can get the products within 48 hours. And Kabir gets his office within a day. The background wall is accentuated with a wallpaper and art that we specially customized for Kabir. This is my favorite part of his office. Kabir is a very creative person, so I have designed his office space with the help of some of the most progressive brands in just a few hours. The wooden textured flooring in Kabir's office was thoughtfully planned and executed with the help of the Orient Bell's wooden finish tiles. The Orient Bell Tiles trial look feature allows you to try different options for tiles before you choose the final one. It helped me give a structure to Kabir's office while keeping it classic and yet modern. I wonder what Kabir is going to think of his new office space. Wow. Dr. Zhivago, that's nice. One of my favorite films. Nice so far. Oh, I love the way the posters have been used and my two national awards. And what's here? New blinds. Nice. I like the texture. And the wooden floor tiles. That looks really nice. Wow, but a lot in a day, I must say. I like this corner. This boss is the legendary Polex camera, which is the first camera that I used for making my sort of films in film school, the Polex 16mm. All of us in Jamia used to use this to make our first films. In fact, Shah Rukh must have shot his first film on this too. So this is, of course, very, very special. This is also very special for me because this Arri 2C, which of course nobody uses anymore, but this one has gone on to some legendary sets. A large part of Yash Chopra's Diwar was shot with this very camera. So, yeah, this is something that I really, really uh, treasure. This walls turned out lovely, I must say. You know, with these, I like the way the two national awards are framed by all my, my films. And uh, in one sort of snapshot, you get my entire filmography here. And uh, that's always special because whenever I look at these, you know, every poster sort of has so many stories behind them. One look at them and you, there's a rush of memories that come. So I love the way this space has been handled. It's a nice table, multi-level, nice sofa. Love these black and white cushions. This rug is contrasting really well with those wooden floor tiles. Nice, makes, makes the whole place look nice and uh, cozy and comfortable. Designing your office taught me what a difference even one day can make. Hope you enjoyed the space. Best glory. Hey, there's a hamper from Curl On. Thank you, Curl On. It looks like a nice big one. What's this? It's Play Me. Hey, Kabir. I hope you enjoy your old yet new office space. This was my first ever project where I had to turn things around in just one day or maybe even less. Promised I have not changed much around the office and kept its true value and essence. I really hope you do some great work from this space. Wow. Thank you, Gauri. Up 
apart from of course the lovely touches that you you've given in a, in just today's time gauri i think what makes it special and i'm a big one for that i i always feel the uh, though i'm not at all a spiritual person uh, but i always get the vibe of a place and you know i said that this this room has a certain warmth to it and i think that warmth that extra warmth is actually coming from uh, from the friendship that we share going back years and years when you and i were still in college and we danced together for west side story years before i uh, decided to embark uh, on this journey and follow my dreams to come and make films in in, in the hindi film industry um, so i think that's the, the you know the years of that warmth has come and it's permeated this room and is it that's what making this room so special so thank you for that call now we come to the part of the show where i give you some pro tips on how to turn your home into a dream home Your workspace affects your productivity and untidy and a poorly planned office can cause frustration and hamper the mood. Another mistake people make with offices is not lighting it well or trying to utilize all the space. Why should your office be a cold uninviting place you cannot wait to go home from? This is where your first impressions are created. So go with smart choices and make it count. Your desk should always be in a position where your visitors can see you the moment they enter the office. Design it keeping your favorite thoughts and memories in mind. Choose your colors and elements that inspire you and watch how that elevates your work experience. See you in the next episode of Curl On Dream Homes with me Gauri Khan, powered by Bonito Designs, where we meet a new celebrity and design a new space. Download Mirchi Plus, कहानियों का असली अड्डा